hello, I'm Robin Dupp. I'm a compiler engineer with Ventana Micro. And today I'm going to show you the vectorization improvements that went into GCC 14, so the latest installment. Um, first, a bit of preface. Uh, this talk focuses on the vector extension and nothing else. Of course, there are like multiple improvements that went into GCC 14, but we're focusing on the vector extension and closely related uh, improvements. It is not all my work, obviously, but basically I'm summarizing what the community did. Um, the community consists of like numerous contributors, among them RevAI, Intel, Sci5, Revos, Eswin, Star5, Viral, Embicosm, RAU, Ventana, that's us, and many others that I forgot to mention. So as you can see, uh, like the community is pretty active nowadays, and throughout GCC 14 we saw several new faces actually. Still, we can always use more helping hands. There is lots of work to do. So if you know somebody or you want to contribute yourself, feel free to reach out, contribute. We have tasks for all levels of seniority. And just go ahead. So what did we actually do for since GCC 13 in 14? We wired up all auto, auto vectorization primitives, like for integer and floating point. Some of them are loads and stores, scatter, gather, binary uh, operations like add, subtract, X, or all you can think of. So the takeaway here is loop and SLP vectorization work with GCC 14 and GCC's vector test suite passes. On top of that, we have vectorized memcopy, string lang, and string, co string compare um, functions and related functions. We do have a vector calling convention now that's in sync with what LLVM does. We have vector crypto intrinsics as of recently, and a pretty nice feature actually is we have the XT head vector extension integrated, and it, you can compile it just as you would compile the standardized RBV code. So this uh, T head vector is RBV 0.7. It's not really um, um, like compliant to, to the um, um, spec, but it still works. And on top of that, again, we have an out-of-order instruction scheduling model for vector instructions that is going to help us improve performance in the future. Besides that, there have been many um, improvements to the VSET VL pass. Um, it's now fully based on GCC's loop invariant code motion we can dynamically select the ELMO for a code snippet, and this is based on a register pressure um, estimate at vectorization time. The last thing I want to mention, that's not really a GCC improvement, but some kind of meta improvement. Larry touched on this before. We have pre and post commit CIs, which ensure we don't check in something that doesn't compile, makes performance worse, and so on and so on. A small example, um, on the left, you see a function foo that takes three arrays, x, y, and z, um, and a predicate array as well as a length. We go through all of the, those arrays and set x to either the sum of y and z or to just y, depending on the predicate. So if you compile this snippet with GCC 14, uh, the option line would just be GCC MRG RV64 GCV and uh, optimize it 03. The snippet on the right will, uh, the assembly snippet to the right will show up. And well, most notable about this is we do vector loads, we set the vector mask, and the add that's actually marked orange here is performed under a predicate that's stored in V0. Afterwards, we store the result. So that's just as simple as it works. Some lessons learned throughout the development. The first thing is pretty interesting, um, at least for GCC developers. Um, GCC uses auto-generated instruction description files that are basically more or less large files that help the, the uh, compiler recognize certain instructions and its pro uh, properties. RVV now requires a huge number of those properties of modes due to ELMO and so on and so on. And this caused the auto-generated files to blow up. So at some point, we had files the size of 20, 30 megabytes. 
and this uh, like slowed the compiler bootstrap time down to a crawl. So it wasn't possible at all. This means we had to split up or change the generators to split up all those files to 10 files or something and needed to f perform some other tricks in order to get it to bootstrap in a regular, reasonable time. Another thing that's pretty interesting for us as compiler developers is the vector mask implementation of RVV is different to what all the others do in that we need to bit pack our masks. The others don't do that. And this was a source of many bugs throughout the development cycle of GCC 14. Um, the last but not least thing to mention is that while developing the vectorization or the, um, like the RVV implementation, is that we disabled the vector costing model. That means we ve just basically vectorized everything that's there, everything that's humanly possible. Um, and this led to us discovering very long-standing bugs, sometimes five, six years they have been untouched, and we like found out what they are and, and fixed them throughout our development cycle. OK, with all that said, how are we actually doing? So this plot shows. Um, all subtests of spec int 2017, int to the left, float to the right, and um, the number 100 is equivalent to the scalar code. So we want to see a reduction by vectorization, a reduction in dynamic instruction count that's all done in QMU, no real hardware here. Um, so if we see numbers below 100, that's good for vectorization. Um, one thing. Uh, to, to note is, and as expected, X264 tests, that's uh, the ones here, um, are behaving as expected. So we reduced the number of instructions um, by 50%, 75%, depending. Um, and the same is true for several of the spec FP test cases. So the last one here um, is ROMs that basically has only 25% of the scalar number of instructions executed. OK, that, that seems nice uh, at, at first sight, but how are we actually doing versus the competition? This slide here shows um, the relative improvement in vectorization, first versus LVM, RISC-V, RVV, in uh, orange, and versus GCC, AR64, in blue. Above zero here means GCC does better. Below zero means GCC does worse. Um, you might notice that the bars have a slightly, uh, are slightly higher to the top, so GCC is overall a bit better. Um, but there are a number of outliers here. Most uh, like interesting might be the LBM one, which GCC currently doesn't vectorize, but LBM does. And this explains the huge discrepancy here. Same is true for parts of X264, but we'll come to that in like now. So one takeaway is uh, when compiled with GCC 14, uh, RVV can help reduce the number of dynamically executed instructions by 20% across spec 2017. That's in line with what we expected and in line, of, in line with what we see on other architectures. It's, we're slightly better than um, GCC IR64 and slightly better than LVM, relatively spoken. So some to do. So I mentioned LBM and X264. What's mainly missing here is strided load support. So that's a main a known pain point in the vectorizer on GCC. It is somewhat UARCH dependent in what you want to be doing, but LVM definitely does better here. So we need to um, focus on that one. And indeed, we do focus. So currently, we're revi revisiting some um, costing model decisions early on in the vectorizer. And we're also working on enhancing load, uh, strided load support there. On top, we need to improve SLP discovery. And in particular, we need to handle stores with gaps in the vectorizer. That's all ongoing work. Um, let's see if it makes it into GC15 or beyond. More to do. So a long-standing issue in GCC is we have basically two vectorizers. One is the old-fashioned loop vectorizer. The other is the SLP vectorizer that's loop aware and can handle, is more fine-grained and can handle more cases. Right now, GCC is in transition of disabling the old loop vectorizer and going to an all SLP representation so we can handle and vectorize more cases. This will require adjustments on our part. Next caveat is 
our cost model for RVV is currently very basic. So we barely have microarchitectural specific tuning in place right now. Um, but we expect this to change once more hardware hits the ground, so to say, um, and once it's available for public testing. Of course, we test with the boards Nathan mentioned, but it's still a bit difficult to get like proper results right now. One thing that's still missing, but also work in progress, is we need to handle overlap for register groups, vector register groups, um, because the spec is pretty particular about this, and we need to do scalar evolution for VZVL. So this is all that's work in progress, but something's already made it into what's going to be GCC 15. One thing that uh, stood out while, while testing is Cormac Pro's zip test actually has this loop, which uses saturating subtraction. GCC didn't support this until three weeks back, <laughs> but um, now actually we do. So if you check out the current GCC, we can vectorize this loop. Um, and the snippet that uh, LLVM has been doing or has been emitting for a while already is shown here at the, uh, at the bottom. So it just uses uh, saturating subtraction, and this helps with this particular loop for about 10% or so. That's already in. The next thing that's pretty big, which made it um, into GCC 14 from an uh, ARM contribution, is early break vectorization. So that loop that you can see here contains a break, which means we couldn't vectorize this before. Now, since ARM's contribution, it's possible to vectorize this under certain constraints. And um, as of now, the currently available GCC 15 trunk can also vectorize this for RVV. This is pretty common and frequently used, but there is an even more common idiom here, uh, which requires additional support to support. So uh, what we do right now in GCC is once we recognize um, a specific loop that we know can be vectorized, one example is a certain kind of string length that's called raw mem char here, um, that's present in the Zellen benchmark of, of spec 2017. It's basically a two byte string uh, length, but out of the box, we cannot vectorize this, so we know this loop has the following shape. Let's recognize it and replace it by a, like, let's say, handwritten assembly thing in the compiler. We do this currently, and this can also be done for a two-byte string compare. It can be um, done for lots of other uh, functions in Zellen, and we have a proof of concept locally in place or downstream, so to say. Um, and LVM can do the same thing. They actually do the same thing for a hot loop in XZ. So the, the loop is shown here. It's pretty similar to a string compare again, but not quite. So they recognize this one. Um, they replace it by a known good vectorization uh, routine and get a nice speed up out of it. So the commonality of all those examples here that I showed is that they contain a break. So this leads us back to the early break vectorization. But one key thing is missing that RVV supports. That's first fold load. Those can ensure that we don't read past the bounds of an array while vectorization uh, takes place. And currently, there's work ongoing from numerous contributors of supporting this in the GCC vectorizer. That would mean, once we have this support in, combined with early break vectorization, that we could actually vectorize all of those loops I just mentioned. And we don't need those special uh, recognizers anymore. So there's more to come. That's basically um, uh, just smaller things that, I, that um, uh, barely didn't make it into GCC 14, but will make it into the 15. The first thing is a combination of a vector broadcast from a scalar uh, register into, the, uh, into a vector register, and then the use of this vector register in like an ad or something. I just uh, put a placeholder here up, but it could be ad, whatever. So RVV supports this. like. Um, implicitly broadcasting from a scalar to uh, the vector register and then operate on that. Um, right now, GCC cannot combine those under certain circumstances. For example, if we go into a loop, but there is like work that just landed, I think, yesterday on the trunk, so now we can do that. We need some more register pressure uh, adjustments there, but it's possible. Some things that also stood out is that LVM does more aggressive fast math reassociation. 
That's what I'm currently working on. It's not quite finished, but should probably be there. That will benefit scalar and vector code generation. Then uh, we can and will make use of the vector crypto extension for auto vectorization, like a, a widening shift is helpful with, when implementing scatters or gathers. Um, and some minor things are also still min max reductions and more aggressive if conversion, as well as like having uh, like a better widening support early on in vectorization as opposed to later on as we do now. And with that, I'd like to conclude my talk. For more details or further discussion, feel free to drop by by my poster tomorrow, or you can drop by at um, Jeremy Bennett's poster today. He's also covering some of those topics. Thank you very much. Thank you.